So it's January, and Nintendo decided to finally reveal the Switch, after picking a pretty horrible time to show it off in an attempt to keep the whole Nintendo Switch reveal global. And what else can I say? This is a letdown for most people over the age of 12. First, let's get to the elephant in the room, the price point. Now, normally handheld gaming consoles that succeed have one thing in common. They're affordable for a typical mom buying something to keep their kid distracted on a long car trip, or for a broke college student robbed of their funds by tuition and textbooks in the hope that they can eventually be that rich lawyer or doctor with a wife and kids, and a BMW 7 Series, and a nice big lake house. However, there is one major problem with the Nintendo Switch. As a handheld gaming console, it is very costly, going for $300. That's right, $300. $300. For a home console, the $300 price point is a sweet spot, as shown by the famous E3 1995 mic drop presentation from Sony that ended up causing them to dominate the console industry for the next few years. $299. <laughs> However, for a handheld, the sweet spot is under $200, and Nintendo handhelds were traditionally affordable, and the PSP later on in its lifespan was at a lower price point too. The Switch, on the other hand, costs as much as an Xbox One or a PS4, two consoles with sizable libraries and guaranteed support. To make matters worse, the accessories for the Switch cost even more than first-party accessories for the PS4, Xbox One, or even the Wii U did, with the Switch Pro controller costing $70, and the Joy-Con controllers, which are what the Snap-on controllers are called, costing $80. If your dock breaks, or you want to use your Switch on multiple TVs, it's going to cost $90 for a dock. That is, if you can even get the system at its retail price. If Nintendo's recent supply issues affect the Switch as well, expect to pay eBay markup for the newest Nintendo console as usual. And with pre-orders of the Nintendo Switch selling out, pissing off many gamers on sites like NeoGAF, so far this looks like history might repeat itself yet again. After all, the Nintendo tax is a real thing. And speaking of the Nintendo tax, you now need to pay to play online. That's right, the only platform that has free online this gen is the PC, and good luck convincing a console gamer to switch to the PC. It's like telling your dad that rear-wheel drive stick shift sports cars, like the ones featured in Initial DR are amazing. He'll give you a million reasons why you should drive a Prius or Toyota Camry instead. The battery life of the Nintendo Switch is only around, well, two and a half to six hours. Now, remember when Nintendo diehards would bring up Game Boy competitors in the early 90s and tell you that battery life is why they failed? Well, it seems like poor battery life is normal these days, as the system can only last two and a half hours at worst, and six at best. On a car or plane trip and want to play your Switch longer? Time to shell out more money for a power bank at either Walmart or that shady gas station on the corner. When you do the math, the costs all add up. This isn't something a suburban household or Section 8 household can afford for a plane trip or car trip. This is something you'd buy for the kids to play in the back of your Mercedes or in those business class seats. My friends saw this and the games announced for the system and they thought, Either they'll wait for a price drop if one ever happens, which might not happen because just look at the Nintendo Wii U, or they'll wait for more games because 300 bucks is not worth it for just a handful of games. So let's see what games were on the Switch. First of all, when they show games, this reeked of the Wii U presentation so much. Well, maybe marginally better. They spent all this time showing off gimmicks, left and right, including gimmicks people will realistically use as much as schools use quiz clickers. But as for games? Well, there were mostly Asian third parties, and there was also a new Shin Megami Tensei main series game announced, running on the Unreal Engine 4, which is probably the only thing worth a damn shown at this presentation. There were some ports announced, with a great big montage of games already on the PS4, and uh, that's it. Western third party was almost absent, except for a few sports games, and a port of a 2011 game developed by one of the biggest liars in gaming. Games like Call of Duty, Battlefield, The Witcher, Titanfall 2, Grand Theft Auto, and more were absent. 
However, there is NBA 2K coming to the Switch, and even better, there's FIFA coming to the Switch. You know, the game that in 2014 came out for the PS2, the PS3, and the PS4 all in the same year. Oh, but they did announce Splatoon 2, which looks the same as the first one, with fewer differences than a Call of Duty or Battlefield installment. And they announced a new Mario game that looks just like Sonic Adventure art direction-wise. I mean, Mario in a realistic city? Gee, what could possibly go wrong with that art direction? And they also announced some Wii-era motion gimmick game called ARMS. Yes, that's the name of it. At least the Nintendo Switch is region free now, so you can happily import those Senran Kagura and Neptunia games if they come out on the Switch and play them in your basement. But here's the biggest problem with the Switch. Nintendo pulled off the same shit with the Wii U, with presentation saying, We have third party games this time around, we promise, we swear, including the third party reel with notable western developers praising their newest gimmick. The Vita and the Wii U both had strong launches that fizzled out afterwards. Both systems launched with ports of current generation games, and then that was it. The Switch is already following the same pattern, with ports of Asian PS4 games being announced. Only time will tell if the Switch will be the same, as many wait for games to come out before spending money. And this doesn't change the fact that the Switch still doesn't know what it wants to be. It's too big for a handheld, and it's too weak for a console. After all, weeaboots and hardcore Nintendo gamers cannot keep systems alive, alone. Just look at the Vita and the Wii U. Just because those systems exist does not mean gamers actually want them at all, especially when you look at Nintendo's past reputation. It'll also be interesting to see if Nintendo fans are going to call out Nintendo for their mistakes this gen, or if they will justify what they were criticizing years ago. Just like what Sony fans did when the PlayStation 4 started charging for online. At least it's under the $2,000 limit, however, and if you got that reference, you can afford a system with only a handful of games. That's all that needs to be said, really, and that's all. Thanks for watching and subscribe for more.